Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike Green. I'm one of the owners of 1A Auto. I want to help you save time and money repairing and maintaining your vehicle. I'm going to use my 20 plus years experience restoring and repairing cars and trucks like this to show you the correct way to install parts from 1AAuto.com. The right parts installed correctly. That's going to save you time and money. Thank you and enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the water pump on this 2002 um, Chevy Impala. This vehicle has the 3.8 liter V6. The engine is used in a lot of different GM vehicles, so the procedure is basically the same. Tools you'll need are a jack, an 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 3 8 inch sockets with a ratchet and extension, a belt or a chain wrench, a hammer, a gasket or slash razor blade scraper, gasket adhesive, torque wrench, and then replacement coolant and a funnel. Start out by removing the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, strut brace on the passenger side. Now there are two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the top of your uh, coolant tank. And then once you have those out, you lift the tank up and you can actually just leave it connected and just kind of lay it on the front of the engine. Yeah, just make sure you don't spill any coolant out of it. Okay, this is called a belt or a chain wrench. You put it down uh, on the water pump pulley. Then take the belt, pull it tight, turn it, kind of holds itself. And then 8 millimeter socket and ratchet. And I apologize, I kind of got in the way here. Uh, you hold the pulley with that belt wrench, then use an 8 millimeter socket and ratchet and take the four bolts that hold the water pump pulley on there. And then once I'm done that, I uh, remove the bolts and then I'll remove the pulley. Okay, so that was a series of bolts. There's two larger ones over here, and then two larger ones here, and then a series of bolts around the perimeter. Okay, you can see this bolt right here is blocked by the power steering pulley, and that's pretty easy to remedy. You need to just take the power steering pump off, which is if you reach through, slowly turn the power steering pump pulley, and just reach through and feel and you'll actually, you can see my, you can see the tip of my finger on one of the bolts. So reach right through the pulley and remove the bolts for the power steering pump. Okay, so 13 millimeter, a small extension. Okay, I'm just going to speed it up here. So I use that extension with the socket on it, put it through the hole in the pulley, get it onto the bolts, and there's two bolts that hold that power steering pump in place. And once you have uh, those bolts out, then you can pull that um, power steering pump. And I don't actually take the bolts out of the pump, I just pull the pump forward to expose that uh, water pump bolt. Okay, so now you can see, after removing those two bolts, my power steering pump's out of the way easy access to that bolt and the rest of them. Before you take the water pump bolts out, make sure you have a catch pan underneath. The larger bolts are 13 millimeter. Okay, I'm just going to kind of fast forward here a little bit as I remove the bolt and each bolt on, one of the bolts on each side goes into the water jack of the engine so it will drain the fluid from the engine as you pull the bolt out. So you can see as I took that bolt out, now I'm leaking fluid out of the engine, which is fine. 
Okay, I'm just going to fast forward through uh, taking out the 13 millimeter or the larger bolts on the other side. And again, just like on uh, the first side, one of the bolts leads right to the water jacket, so you'll get some coolant that leaks out of the front of the engine. Okay, and interesting enough, the smaller bolts are 3 8 inch. Okay, and again, just use fast forward as I remove. There's four smaller bolts, uh, one is underneath, and then three are on top. Okay, with all the bolts out, take a hammer, a couple taps, okay, and your old water pump. Okay, so you can see our old water pump. Uh, we need to find, or just make sure we remove all the gasket from the engine. Okay, usually you kind of reach down there with your fingernails and peel slowly. I'm going to try and take off the largest chunks as you can. Okay, it's a razor blade holder, very sharp blade. Helps to get stuff like this off. Just run the razor blade underneath the gasket. And I'm going to fast forward here again. Uh, so very important, make sure you remove all the old gasket um, then use some paper towels, maybe a little bit of solvent, and just make sure that the surface where you mount the water pump is clean. Okay, here in this shot I'm just going to jack up the driver's side of the car a little bit. That just helps to get a little more of the coolant out of the engine. And then obviously after some of it drips out, then let the car back down. Like I said before, a little paper towel, soak up the fluid and make sure everything's clean. Okay, with my new pump, I've put a very light amount of uh, gasket sealant on both sides. I'm going to put my upper and lower bolt through. Uh, two of the holes are just lineup holes. Okay, it goes in like that. Now, I'm being careful not to hit it against much of anything. I'm going to get it close. Start my top bolt. Just so I know I'm lined up pretty well. Okay. Put it on. Start my bottom bolt. Now I'm going to uh, put all the rest of the bolts in by hand. Um, then I'm just going to use my 8mm socket and ratchet as well as my 13mm uh, socket and ratchet. And I'll just snug the bolts first because you do want to torque these on. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, to tighten the rest of the way, you want to use a torque wrench. The larger bolts, you can torque to 15 pounds. Okay, and then you turn it about an eighth of a turn. Okay, start on one side, then go to the other side. I'll speed up here as I torque the other bolts. Again, that's 15 foot pounds and then about an eighth of a turn and kind of tighten them up in a pattern. Do an opposite. So when you, you do the inner on one side, then do the inner on the other side, the outer on one side, then the outer on the other side. Okay, now the smaller ones, 11 pounds. And then you want about a quarter, just a little less than a quarter of a turn. 
Okay, again here I'll speed up. Um, that was 11 foot-pounds and then a little less than a quarter of a turn. And you want to do these in a pattern as well. I do the top and then the bottom one and then the left and then the right one. Then we're going to take our 13 millimeter socket on our extension. Reach down. Kind of put the power steering pump back up in place. Get our socket on the bolt. And I have to lift it, feel it into place, and start turning the bolt. See if you can get it to catch. I'm just going to make something up. Feels like I got it. Okay, and that kind of was the edited version. I did probably play with that for about a minute and a half or two minutes before I got the bolt to start in. Once you get the first bolt in, then you just kind of put the uh, socket and extension on the lower bolt, start that one in, um, and then grab your ratchet and tighten them up. And you want to tighten these up firm. You are going into aluminum, so do not over tighten them. Um, probably calls for about 25 to 30 foot pounds. We're going to put the pulley back on. There are little dimples uh, punched through the pulley. And if you look closely, you can see there's threaded holes and then the little dimples right next to them. So put the pulley back, put the pulley down on, kind of line it up looking back through it. And then you know when you got it on because it's nice and you push on it and it stays nice and steady. Start one of the bolts. And fast forward as I, um, once I get one of the bolts started, start another bolt and then get all four started and kind of on there by hand. And now use the belt wrench again, put it around uh, the pulley in the opposite way, then grab the eight millimeter socket with a ratchet and tighten these bolts up firm. Um, they probably should be anywhere from 11 to 12 foot pounds. Okay, we're going to follow a serpentine belt diagram. So we're going to put a loop down around the crank here, then around the AC pulley, um, get it around our power string pump and up and over. The only thing we won't put it on at first is the alternator. Okay, so we're going to take a loop and put it down around the crank pulley. Okay, continue it down around the AC pulley. Okay. It comes up from the crank pulley, goes around our water pump, around our tensioner, and then down and around our steering pulley. Got it preliminarily routed. It's a little off here. Let's see. It's on our AC pulley. It's on the crank pulley correctly. And now it's on the power steering pulley correctly. Okay, so it just has to go up onto the alternator. Okay, if you don't have a long ratchet, you can always do put that 15 millimeter socket on there, put a nice big pipe here. Okay, that gives you a lot of extra leverage. Oh, it looks like my belt just came off my power steering pulley. Okay, so pull with that pipe. Okay, I do apologize here. Uh, you use the pipe and the ratchet to turn the uh, serpentine belt tensioner counterclockwise and then put the belt up and on to the alternator. Okay, so the belt's on my AC compressor correctly. It's down and around the crank correctly. Power steering pump up and around. 
Okay, I'm just going to kind of go through, speed through here one of the last steps, which is putting that coolant bottle back in place and then using the 13 millimeter nuts to hold down the brace and the 10 millimeter nuts to uh, fasten the coolant bottle on. Okay, now you want to fill the radiator directly uh, on this Impala. Uh, it originally used the red Dex Cool, um, but it's already been changed over to the green, so I'm just using the regular green antifreeze. And you want to fill the radiator directly, then start it up, run it, and check the fluid and just fill it the rest of the way through the uh, overflow bottle. Um, for the first few times you drive it, just uh, pay attention to it and make sure you keep the right amount of fluid in it. See the engine's running, it's been dripping from there. Might be able to see a little, see a little steam, that's just kind of the stuff burning off that spilled on the engine and stuff. Little drips underneath. A couple little resi res residual ones from just, um, again, what spilled on the body and whatnot. We hope this helps you out. Brought to you by www.1aauto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.